We're back for this final segment with Bruno Combi. In addition to a nutritionist and an all-around really smart guy, Bruno Combi is also a nuclear physicist. What are your opinions on Fukushima? Well, Fukushima is, of course, a bad accident. It's the second worst accident in the history of nuclear power since over 50 years. But it's interesting to see when you look into more details that this accident was triggered by a double major natural disaster, which was the earthquake and the tsunami coming uh, half an hour later. Although uh, the tsunami has killed about 30,000 unfortunate Japanese citizens, do you know how many people died from radiation in the Fukushima nuclear power plant? How many? A couple dozen, I don't know. Well, not exactly. The answer is absolutely none. Four persons died in the Fukushima nuclear power plant, but none of them died from radiation. Two of them died from the tsunami. A wave about 10 meter high invaded the site. Now, because of the earthquake, which had half an hour earlier struck the site, the, all the low altitude parts were evacuated. In Japan, they're used to earthquakes and they know a tsunami can follow an earthquake. So whenever there's a major earthquake, everybody's evacuated to higher ground. That was the case in Fukushima as elsewhere. But two unfortunate workers did not hear the alarm signal and they remained in the basements and undergrounds of the nuclear power plants. So they, were, uh, they died, drowned by the tsunami. Uh, one worker was on top of a crane and when the earthquake struck and was killed by the earthquake in his crane. And uh, a few weeks later, when they were in the rescue operations, a fourth worker was killed because he was carrying very heavy loads on a very hot day and he made a heart attack. Those are the four persons who died in the Fukushima nuclear power plant. There shouldn't be any fears about the radiation then? Of course, the radiation increased and there were major release of radiation, but the population, the civilian population around the site was evacuated but on the day after the accident and before the Tuesday, the 15th of March, when the major release began because the containment was broken. But in the four days before that, the civilian populations were entirely evacuated in a 20-kilometer zone. So it's absolutely certain that no civilians were exposed to high levels of radiation because they were all evacuated before the major release. Now, the only uh, risks are for the workers which are working on the rescue operations on this nuclear power plant. And in this case, they were all followed with the dosimeters. So we exactly know the doses that they had received. There's been many thousands of them working in these operations. But only about 10 of them have received a dose which is above the authorized level of radiation for these nuclear workers. And none of them is above the dose that gives you uh, uh, health for your risk and significant risk for your life. So none of them has had any symptoms and only 10 are above, slightly above the authorized dose. So it's absolutely certain that, for the moment, no one has died from radiation in Fukushima, and it's highly probable that in the future, no one will ever die from the radiation doses in Fukushima. This is a quite interesting story, because the second worst accident in the history of nuclear power ends up killing nobody. Uh, an industry which kills nobody in 50 years and gives a major service to the population, which is nuclear electricity, is a very, very safe industry. That's the reason I personally, as an environmentalist, I am in favor of nuclear power, because it's the best energy we have. Of course, it's not perfect. Certainly, accidents can still happen, and that's why nuclear safety remains important. But it's the safest we have. It's the cleanest we have. And we should run for it because we're in a world which is today totally addicted and dependent on oil and natural gas. 85% of our energy is from oil, gas, and coal, which are major pollutants. And we're changing the composition of the atmosphere, the air we are breathing on the entire planet. It's a global problem. And the only alternative we have, which is able to produce sufficient amounts of energy, is nuclear power. It has a great potential for increase. It's clean. It's very safe. Therefore, we should run for it in every country around the world. And we're very lucky that we do have this nuclear solution. 
That's why both as an environmentalist and as a nuclear physicist, I strongly support the use of nuclear power for civilian uses. Of course, I'm not in favor of nuclear proliferation and bombs. That's another question. I watched this movie, Cave of Forgotten Dreams. The water that came out of the nuclear power plant, very close to this cave, mutated the alligators. And this was in France. Well, that's all media hype. You see, the two countries in the world which have uh, the greatest longevity are Japan and France. <laughs> it's among the best. Uh, much better longevity than in the United States. And uh, there's a significant amount of nuclear power. I think uh, when you look at the example of France, it's quite interesting. We have a good lifestyle. We have a good longevity. We have a diet which is a lot raw, much more raw than in uh, the United States or other countries. Natural lifestyle is important, and uh, nuclear energy does not damage that lifestyle. What makes nuclear energy so different is what I call the factor one million. Just one gram of uranium produces as much energy as one ton of oil. Now, one gram to one ton is a factor one million. One million is something. It means that the amount of matter we are taking from the inside of the Earth to produce our energy is not nil, but it's almost nil. It's a factor one million. And the amount of waste we are producing at the other end of the chain is not nil, but it's almost nil. There's almost none of them. It's such a small volume. And now this waste, it's solid waste. And because it's so small amounts, the strategy has been not to put this waste out into the atmosphere, like in the case for carbon dioxide and the burning of carbon fuels. It's to confine the waste and keep them isolated from the biosphere for as long as they're toxic. Because another benefit of nuclear waste is that it is self-degradable by definition. A radioactive substance will disintegrate after a certain amount of time. So if you just keep it isolated from the biosphere until it disintegrates, it has absolutely zero impact, and that's the case for nuclear power. <laughs> that's why it's so clean. No, <laughs> wow. What about cold fusion? I, I hear many things that uh, we're on the cusp of a cold fusion revolution. Uh, cold fusion is, for the moment, it's uh, experiments in laboratories where people can see that small amount of heat is generated in specific circumstances. It's not yet a commercial or industrial reality. If it was, it would be marvelous, and maybe we would need nothing more. But for the moment, it's nothing but the experiments and a physical curiosity. I think the experiments on this should continue because there's a physical phenomenon which is not well explained for the moment, which seems to be a reality. So there's a potential revolution there. But it's not a revolution yet. It's a physical phenomenon, a curiosity. We have to understand what it's about, then we have to domesticate it, and maybe it will be even better than the nuclear fission which we already have. Mm. But for the moment, cold fusion is a small experiment with strange results. So let's pursue on that road. But for the moment, what we have, which is best, is the, the old-fashioned uh, nuclear fission, which is uh, working very well and solves the problem properly. For the moment, it's the best we have. I also noticed that you believe in global warming. That's not always the most popular thing these days. Well, there are arguments on both sides, to say the truth. I'm not a strong believer of global warming. But whether it's true or not, in both cases, uh, we have a serious energy problem. In both cases, we're dependent on carbon fuels today. And in both cases, we need to wean ourselves off carbon fuels as quickly as we can. And in both cases, nuclear energy is the best solution. It's an issue to know whether uh, global warming is true or untrue. But w whatever the answer is to that question, it doesn't change what we should be doing, which is to switch as quickly as possible to nuclear power as our basic energy. Of course, as an environmentalist, I myself am also in favor of energy conservation, energy efficiency, and renewable energies to some extent. But these are expensive, and they take time to implement. I live here, I'm speaking to you right now, from my echo house in the close suburbs of Paris. My house produces more energy than it consumes. It's a positive energy house. It's a passive house. It requires very little energy. 
and just the heat from my own body and those of my child and the people around me is almost enough to heat the home. So there are a lot of things we can do, especially in the building and the construction area. There's also things we should be doing with the cars, and electric cars are an important solution, which is coming on the market now, and so this is a good thing. If we build better homes and we drive better cars, we still need a major energy source to light up the cities, to produce our food, and to uh, uh, live a modern and comfortable life, which we're very lucky to be enjoying today. And we better be careful that if we don't do the right choices, uh, this might not last forever because the carbon fuels will be exhausted in a few decades from now. So the media has incorrectly portrayed the nuclear power industry. That's right. There's been a lot of media hype on the dangers of the nuclear industry. And there's a lot of nuclear benefits which have been hidden out uh, to the public. Among these benefits, there's also the benefits of the low doses of radiation. Radiation, in fact, is absolutely natural. It's everywhere in nature. Man has not invented radioactivity. It's everywhere in nature since the dawn of times. If you go to many of the thermal spas, uh, where you go to those hot water springs, uh, many of them have their beneficial effects, which are caused by radon. And people have simply forgotten that today because it's become politically incorrect to just mention that. I just spent my... Uh, a Christmas uh, holiday a few weeks ago in a place in southern France called La Bourboule, which is a famous thermal spa for people who have allergy and uh, several immune diseases. But it's the radon which explains the beneficial effects on health over there. And in fact, that city of La Bourboule, where people live every day, is about as radioactive as many places just around Fukushima today in the uh, Forbidden Zone, 20 kilometer zone. Uh, of course, in Fukushima, there are still in the 20 kilometer zone a few hot spots. But most of the zone is at lower levels of radiation than the city of La Bobo. And so it's a, a sort of strange thing that in some cases, we're very afraid of radiation when it's low, natural, and in fact beneficial doses that we're exposed to. And in other cases, we're afraid of radiation when it's not, and we run for it uh, when we should be careful. You see, their information can be distorted very easily, and I think the media have a huge responsibility on what has been told to the public in the past decades about radiation. Of course, there are explanations, as always. The two superpowers, which were the United States and Russia, have sort of shared the world. They, they have split the world in two, and each of the two superpowers was dominating half of the world. Why? Just because they terrorized the entire humanity by exaggerating the consequences of a nuclear holocaust. Of course, I'm not saying that nuclear bombs are not dangerous. Hiroshima killed 150,000 people in just a few minutes. But the dangers of radiation have been vastly exaggerated, and especially so for the low doses of radiation, which not only are not dangerous, but they can be beneficial to some extent. And so this is being rediscovered right now. It's what is called hormesis. And so I invite you to Google hormesis and uh, natural radiation, ra radioactive substances, and see what you can find. There's a lot of information on this you will find on the website of the organization which I created 10 years ago now. So combi.org is the website for Institute Bruno Combi. So our uh, object is to make uh, scientific research on natural health and promotion of public health. So we do fundamental research on nutrition and lifestyle, and then we promote to the public our findings, such as the fact that eating raw natural foods is highly important, non-smoking, abstain from coffee and drugs. So that's our action with the Combi Institute. We'll see everything on the website, combi, C-O-M-B-Y, dot org. Uh, also the benefits of taking a nap and so on. Now, um, I also created another organization which is called Environmentalists for Nuclear Energy because as uh, humans, uh, our entire society is just going to run into nowhere when we start missing oil and gas. And this uh, is a very dangerous turning point for humanity. 
I believe that the only solution we have is nuclear power, and the reason we should run for it is environmental reasons. So that's why I created Environmentalists for Nuclear Energy. So if you share our views, you can join the organization. You can see, if you don't share our views, you can see our arguments on the website. It's ecolo.org, like ecology, E-C-O-L-O dot O-R-G. And there you have a document section with a lot of information on the benefits of nuclear power and how low the risks are and, of course, how careful we should be in using that energy. But it's a solution. It's not a problem. So you should change your views on nuclear power. I invite you to do that as well. Then I have a third website, which is uh, the optimistic movement. I think we should change our views on things and be more optimistic. Today, when you go to see your medical doctor, you go to see him only when you have a disease and you're ill. You should start thinking about your health and doing something about it before you get ill. You should be positive in your approach. That's for your own health, but also in other areas. For example, uh, on economy, we should have uh, looked into the financial structure of our society much before we go into a financial crash that we are in today, a financial crisis. Uh, there are other ways to organize the economy, and it can be certainly optimized and improved. So the optimistic movement, which I created about 10 years ago, looks into how to improve various sectors of society, both our companies, our own life, our psychology, the way we approach things, our philosophy. So it's a rather open movement on how we can improve our lives, and our society. That's for the optimistic movement. So that are the three not-for-profit organizations which I created over time. You can uh, support these organizations and make a donation. You can find information on the web. It's all free. Please help yourself. And uh, if you want to support us, you can join as a local correspondent or you can make a donation and contribute. Uh, even if it's just a few dollars, it's quite helpful. Bruno Combi, it has been an honor to have you on the show today. Russell, it was a great pleasure. Thank you. I enjoyed speaking with you, and be happy and improve your life.